Today on Crimes Among Us, I bring you the story of the mysterious death of Alonzo Brooks. Alonzo is part of quite a big family, a family of five. Nowadays, a family of five is really big compared to back in the day where they used to have 10, but now people generally have two to three kids. So he had a lot of support there, a lot of family that loved him. He had three sisters and one brother. Alonzo was the baby. Alonzo was an athlete. He could always be found playing basketball, playing football in the neighborhood. I mean, he liked to he liked to go. Brooks was very close to his mother, and even at the age of 23, he still stayed with his mother. Brooks would always return home no matter what. He'd go out just like a teenager, and he would come back home. He never went outside of the box on that. Their home was in Gardner, Kansas, and on April the 2nd, 2004, Alonzo, also known as Zoe, him and all of his friends met up, and from there they decided who was going to ride with who. He looked at his friend, one of them, and asked, was anybody riding with him? He said, no, come on, hop in, let's go. They pulled up to this party. There was a very long driveway in this party. They all remember this long driveway they had to go to deep out in the country. The town was lay seen about an hour away from where he lived. Seeming to break the ice soon as they arrived, Zoe yelled out the window, who wants a beer? He was planning to have a really fun night. His friend said that he was trying to participate in all the festivities, whatever it was, any drinking games, anything there that was fun, he wanted to be a part of that night. The party goers were from age 16 all the way up to 21 being the oldest person there. This was a rather large party ranging anywhere from 30 to up to 50 people showed up to this party. Zoe was there with his group, but there was allegedly another group, a much larger group, people that were not too fond of anyone with skin color. Reports have said that during the party, Zoe got in a slight argument or altercation with somebody from the other group. It was very intense. They heard racial slurs. People had to get in between this. They even said that Zoe was threatened. No one wanted to see a fight that night. Everyone was just trying to have fun. And I mean, and Zoe with a background in martial arts, he's not one to just back down from anyone. Around 11 o'clock, they had got a call about another party. So everyone just really started heading out there. Alonzo's ride had actually went reportedly to get some cigarettes. And he did not return because he got lost on a gravel road, some back gravel roads. So he called back and told someone to take Alonzo home. Adam allegedly thought that Zoe had already found the ride, and without making any confirmation, he just went on about his business. Unfortunately, this would be the last party that Zoe would ever attend, because after this, he disappeared. One day after he goes missing, Alonzo's childhood friend, Rodney English, goes searching for him in Lacine. He was not by himself. He brought some more people to help him. They decided to walk towards the light line to see if they could find anything there. They soon discovered Alonzo's hat, and boot. Later on to discover that his other boot was laying on the other side of the road. I mean, this was almost like someone was just driving down the road and threw his stuff out the window. This was a white dominant country town and allegedly somebody pulled up on Rodney and told him, look, you got to leave. You got to leave. And he said he already knew what type of place this was. You could just feel it. They filed a missing persons report, but of course, as police are always going to tell you, they got to be missing for like 24 to 48 hours or something like that before they actually consider them missing. The family was really upset, though, because they knew this was not the type of person to do that. I know everybody says that, but this just fit nothing that he's ever done. They knew something was wrong. Something was definitely wrong. He was missing. The sheriff said he's sure he's just doing what all other kids and teenagers are doing, just walking around. Maybe he decided to walk home, which is crazy because he would have already made it by then. And also, he had been playing a basketball game a week prior where he hurt his ankle. So you're not going to walk around without any type of shoe on after you have a hurt ankle. Nobody does that, and you're not going to just toss your shoes and decide to go walking barefooted. They were getting nowhere on this search. And on April the 7th, 2004, the Kansas Bureau of Investigation took over the case. And on April the 10th, three days later, the FBI joins in on the investigation. On April the 12th, rescue teams searched the creek. They searched with three people on each side. They had cadaver dogs. They had a diving team. Their search would find absolutely nothing. Alonzo's mother was so upset at his friends and deservingly so. Whose friends would just leave somebody like that at a party after an altercation like that? 
The family wanted to search, but the police told them that they had it handled. It would take them 27 days to allow the family to search for their own son. Local police um, enforcement, the Kansas Bureau of Investigation, the FBI, everybody has been searching for Alonzo with no luck. Search parties, um, cadaver dogs, diving teams all around the creek area. No one was able to find it, but now they have gave the family to go ahead to search for Alonzo. On May 1st, 2004, his family gathered up a team and they began their search. Within 30 minutes of looking for Lonzo, they find his remains in some rubbish located next to a creek. The 23-year-old Latino, African-American, one of the only colored people at the party, had been found deceased. So just imagine if the family hadn't been told every day that they called that they're calling just way too much and they've got this handled and maybe they would have been allowed to search. Maybe they could have been found Alonzo's body. Or did someone have this body stored? I mean, you can just speculate whatever was going on. They could have just thrown that body out there because they knew someone was searching for him. Maybe this they felt like this was just their chance to throw that body out there to go ahead and have it discovered. But what I'm understanding from reports, they said that the body just basically showed that it had been sitting out or it possibly showed signs of sitting out there for a long time on the decomposition. The original coroner that performed the autopsy said he could not tell the cause of death. He said that because of the decomposition and all of the animal bites, it was just no way of him knowing exactly what happened. Dr. Eric Mitchell, whose qualification and testimony has allegedly come under fire. An Associate Press story say he routinely removed organs from corpses without the family's consent. The report also said that he stored those body parts in his New York office. Finally, in 2019, Brooks' case would get another chance when U.S. District Attorney Stephen McAllister decided to take another look. Allegedly, he only took this look because of Unsolved Mysteries contacting his office and inquiring about Alonzo. But nevertheless, his body was exhumed. The new examiner concluded that the injuries were inconsistent of those of a normal death. And now this is a homicide. He went from missing to found to murdered. Alonzo's body was found less than 650 feet away from the party. The FBI has now put out a $100,000 reward to anybody that has any information that leads to the arrest of the murderers.